All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. I decided to go earlier so people who they are living in Far East they can join us. Uh, our topic today is Do Allah need us? You know, the Muslims, because they are disconnected with their cult, they have a very funny questions, and their questions is always, a, you know, like a company with the funny answers. This is a Muslim website, it says, if Allah has no needs, no wants or needs, why do anything? Why do anything? But I'm not sure what he meant. Maybe he's saying why we need to do anything for him. So when a Muslim, he decides to think and he uses a brain. The second you do that is the same second you find you find yourself in trouble. Please invite your friends and tell everyone that we are live on air. Actually, I did not tell people on uh, on strong Instagram that we are live. All right. Let us tell them. All right, everyone. Peace of Christ to all of you. We are live on air. If you'd like to join us, does Allah has needs? The answer is yes. If you'd like to join us, please feel free to come and invite your friends and join the community. Thank you. All right. We post that in Instagram so people will know we are here. So does Allah really have needs or he don't have needs? Now, if you ask any Muslim, he will say, sure, Allah doesn't have needs. I mean, what are you talking about? This is Allah. Allah has no needs. The fact, Allah is a needy God. Not only he has needs, he himself is not exist without the needs. And we will talk about some of those needs. Let us say the most important ones and the most funny ones. But before we go, let us read this article. This Muslim saying, I am little confused about the following. We do not, we know that Allah does not want or need our worship. But yet in the Quran, he says, O oh mankind, it is you who stand in need of Allah, but Allah rich. Hmm. You see, when uh, uh, between two brackets it says free of needs, this is not really what the Quran is saying. The Quran is saying he is rich. The second you say that Allah is rich, it's the same. It's the same second you prove to me that Allah has needs. You see what rich mean? Think about it. When I say somebody is rich, that's funny. Because rich is about someone he have money. Chapter 35, verse 15. Let us go to that verse in the Quran so we can understand it better. All right. Verse number 15. O oh mankind, you are poor. In your relation, that's not what the Quran is saying. You see, always the confusion about the Quran is depend what liar you are reading his translation from. There's nowhere here it says in your relation. It says you are poor. That's it. This is a fabricated. Let us change the translator. Let us go another liar, Yusuf Ali. Look here, the word in relation is, is gone. And this is funny, right? I mean, if it's not there, why it was there anyway in the other translator? Oh, you men. It doesn't say, oh, you men too. This is another donkey. It says, oh, you people. It is ye that have need of Allah, 
but Allah is the one free of all wants worthy of all praise this is a false translation too it doesn't say all oh, you men it says all oh, people and it doesn't say it is ye that have needs it says you are the one uh, 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 who is poor I mean I don't know how I can find a, any accurate translation for this stupid Quran not a single Muslim he can come with honest translation I mean what what are you doing I mean are you using Google translation or something look at this guy you are the one who stand in needs doesn't say that it doesn't say that but anyway look at this guy he says it is he all sufficient it doesn't say that it says he is the rich and he is the the one who is you know uh, 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 we thanks it has changed the translating I mean we have to play this game what we can do we cannot find one honest translation Oh mankind it is he is he it is you who stand in need of Allah uh, but Allah is rich now let us just because we can we have to keep changing translator this is in this so just take into consideration whatever is between the two bracket is not really in the verse this is not in the verse so oh mankind it is who it is you who stand in need of Allah but Allah is rich Okay, when we say Allah is rich, Allah is rich with what? Who is the Muslim when I tell me Allah is rich with what? Anyone knows? Allah is rich with what? When I say I am rich. I mean the statement itself proving that Allah he needs because you are rich because you collect you are rich because you store things you are rich because you know maybe uh, uh, I mean you are cheap you are rich you are rich you have a good income you are rich because you make a lot of money but when we say that God is rich what does that mean exactly let us see what other verse in the Quran says to understand this verse better Chapter 5 verse number 64 the Jews they made fun of Allah saying he have uh, He have nothing to spend He have nothing to spend and he can do nothing Look how Muhammad he answered them The Jews say Allah has uh, Allah hands is fettered Their hands are fettered and they are a cue accursed for saying nay, okay, I mean, hold on, hold on. So somebody is saying, look, look, look at this God. This God, he's saying, okay, the Jews they say my hand is holding. They cannot spend. They cannot provide anything. They have, I'm, I'm no one. It is their hand who is not spending. What is that? Are we listening, guys? change the translator just for uh, for, uh, for you know for fun the Jews says all the hands is tied up be there their hands tied up and they are accursed what is that it's like two two women from all generations they are fighting over the rope for the laundry your laundry robe is not good. My laundry robe is longer. What is that? This is God? The Jews, they accuse Allah that he can do nothing. Prove to them that he can do. Not by saying, no, your hand is a... Okay, you are God. Do something. Show them that your hand is not tied up. You know what I mean? You are God. Do something. I mean, what is this verse for? This is the response? A verse okay thank you now let us show you that Allah he had needs the Jews when they say that about Allah they have all the right to say so 
Allah, he big for money. Chapter 2, verse number 2, 4, 5. Who is the one who will give Allah a goodly loan? How you can give Allah a goodly loan? I, I thought Allah has no needs. So the first thing we found that Allah is bankrupt. Allah is what? Is bankrupt. Who want to give a Christian prince a good loan? Well, the Christian prince is a human. Allah is God. Why God? He need a loan. And what the loan we're talking about is money. And if you give me a good loan, I will give you, increase your credit. Uh, well, nice to meet you, Mr. Loan. Let us see a different verse. Chapter 57, verse number 11. Allah is really depressed. Depressed. He is. He's asking for money. Who is he that he will lend into Allah a goodly loan? Please, 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 that he may double it for him, and his may be rich reward. Well, you, you Muslims, you give us headache that Allah has no needs, and your Allah is the bigger in the street asking for a loan. Who wanna give us a loan? If you remember Mimi Hijab, when he had a debate with David Wood, less than two hours after the debate, he made a video saying, Who want to give Allah a goodly loan? He was begging my people so to the send donation. He said to himself, Oh, the Muslim now they are happy. They, th they, they thought the Muslims they have a victory. So now it's time to tell us for money, to beg for money. And he read the verse from the Quran, actually. He read that verse, the first one we showed you, chapter 2, verse number 45, 245. Actually, if you hear the verse, he was reciting the verse with his voice, you will die laughing about how the Quran sounds like with the voice of Mimi Hijab. Now, here, let us go to a different verse. Chapter 57, verse number 18. I mean, the same chapter, the same chapter is, is full of verses. He keeps asking for loan. Lo, those who give alms and those women who lend to Allah. So the, the alms you give is not for the people, it's for Allah. How is that? Let us see. In chapter 64, verse number 17, things get, it, get to more dramatic. And Allah, He grant you forgiveness if you give Him money. Read with me carefully. This is chapter 64, verse number 17. If ye lend to Allah a goodly loan, He will double your reward and He will forgive you. Now we have a brother. He gave me, He just gave me a goodly loan. Let me show you the goodly loan. This brother, you know, I'm really thankful for those who help us. But here, our brother here, he gave me a, a goodly loan of $20. So if I am Allah, I will say to him, I forgive your sin because you gave me a goodly loan. I am Allah. If you give me another $20, I am Allah. I will double your forgiveness. If you give me $5, I will make your forgiveness so-so. If you make it uh, one hundred dollar, I will forgive you for the coming year. I mean, have you ever heard of a god like this? Isn't it obvious that this is a scam? Since when we can bribe God? We give God money, and He is supposed to. If we give Him money, He forgive us. Hmm. What is that? So they give us a speeches that Allah He has no needs, but as you see, Allah not only in need, Allah is in a trouble need. This guy, he is suffering from badly bankruptcy mentality. He think he is homeless. Now here you need to ask yourself: uh, the money is going to go to who? It's going to go to the pocket of Muhammad. But Muhammad he claimed that he is not the one. I mean, this is for Allah. 
Come on, you're not giving it to me. You're giving it to Allah. I mean, I'm, I'm just a pocket of Allah. <laughs> so one of the needs proven in the Quran that Allah have needs is money. And yes, the Jews did not lie when they say that the hands of Allah are tied up. They are tied up in many ways. So number one, Allah has no money to the point he big for money. Number two, Allah has no miracles, which means he have no ability. I will give you an example. The Christians believe, and I am a Christian, that Mary, she gave birth to Jesus and she is a virgin. The God of Islam, he said, how he can have a son if you don't have a girlfriend? How he can have a son if you don't have a girlfriend? Chapter 6, verse number 101. The originator of the heaven and the earth, how can he have a child when he has no girlfriend? That verse actually fit perfectly with me. Christian prince, how can he have a child when he has no girlfriend? So how you say to Allah, you say to us that Allah has no needs, but he is speaking about his bad luck that he cannot have a son unless he have a girlfriend so that to proving that the jews when they say that the that the hands of allah is tied up it's true it is tied up why because as you see allah cannot do anything without help of somebody else in this case he need a woman who have a female gender private part and then after he had sex with her maybe she will give him a baby hmm? are we following abdul Allah in needs of a female in order to accomplish what the God of the Christian can accomplish without a female you see here you notice this is a God speaking but look like he is a normal man and that is Muhammad the fabricator for God is almighty he do not need a female to have what he want to have he do not need anyone to accomplish anything so how you say to us that Allah is all rich and he do not need anything but we find that his richness is stupid and it's a lie he he big for money over all over the Quran and then he cannot have a son without having a girlfriend what else the god of islam he cannot punish us he have a big mouth but his hands is tied up chapter 40 uh, ch chapter 4 verse number 47 it says oh christians and jews believe in one we send to thee which mean to you before we destroy and erase your faces the translation is not accurate really it says here before we erase your faces and we will make her upside down which means your nose will go inside your head your eyes will be gone and your mouth will be tied up by stitches like the same as you see in a horror movie and or we curse them the same as we curse those who they are broken the saturday now here some people they might say oh this doesn't say that i mean this is your christian prince interpretation so let us see one of the biggest Abdul interpretation. Abdul knew better. You know that. Who knows better than the Abdul? Nobody. They are my favorite. Chapter 4, verse number 
Okay. Read carefully with me, Abdul. Your God, Allah, is badly. In, he, you know, he, he is. We should we should send him to the to the body shop. I think he have an accident. Look at this, because this is this is a statement said by somebody. Obviously, he have a bad accident and he lost his mind. Oh, you have given the scriptures, which means the Christian and the Jews. Believe in what we have revealed the Quran confirming that what is with you. How the Muslim they say to us that the Bible is corrupt and the Bible, the verse here says, confirming what is with you. <laughs> let it go, let it go. Of the Torah, what Torah? You know, it says the people of the book, it's me, Christian and Jews, only, not only Jews. Uh, we obliterate faces, erasing the eyes, the noses, and the eyebrows in them and turn them inside out and make them like naps of the neck of a flat plate <laughs> okay allah is all rich allah is all powerful but he could not make one a christian as he claimed uh, let me help you what does that mean exactly you know I'm very good in art, right? I mean, all of you, you know already. Uh, many very well-known artists, they used to come and learn from me art. And I am humbly, I teach them for free. You know, I mean, I cannot charge people for that. You know, I believe every, every citizen have the right to learn how to draw. So let us see. You are a human being. Okay. And you have a nose, look like a truck, and you have a mouth. And you have ears and this is your your hair in case you don't like the style of a brother Sam Shamu Allah he is going to erase our eyes gone no eyes our mouth gone no mouth our ears and don't forget our nose will be gone too and we'll be facing the inside not outside out so it's going to be like this this is how Allah will make your nose after the adjust your nose will go like this inside your head. So this is what Allah He threatened to do. It was just a stupid talk. If Allah is a true God, why He did not do what He said? Especially He's saying, "I will do the same as the as He did to the people of the the one who broke the Sabbath." You remember the Quran says Allah he made the Jews pigs and monkeys so this is not about judgment day this is now because already he made the the, the Jews supposedly pigs and monkeys which is stupid story I mean who in the world want to believe in such a garbage so Allah he have a need here and the need is to scare the hell of you so you can believe in him but obviously because he is weak he cannot do what he claimed to do so he needed to scare you he needed to make you worry he needed to make you think about it okay oh, if i don't believe in allah now i will wake up in the morning i find my teeth is gone my mouth is blocked my nose is upside down inside my head my eyes is gone my ears is flattened and my face oh i forgot to tell you he said he will make your face like a flattened blade so let us make it like a flattened plate your face will turn like this 
like a dish empty that's it there's nothing there do you see it says like a flattened plate hmm he will make them like naps of the necks a flat plate so Allah he can approve himself he threat but he cannot do his threat and this is obviously Allah in needs of deception and false threat so he can blackmail you if you don't do this to me I will do that to you hmm. And we find that what he would do to us is lie because uh, can you find me one a Christian? Uh, Allah he did that to him You know one day a Christian prince he will die and uh, or maybe he gets sick or something the Muslim They will say oh see what Allah he did to Christian prince. See brother what Allah he did <laughs> I appreciate you Abdul here now, if we go and see more verses in the in the most funny book in the history, it's called Quran. We will find that Allah not only he is uh, in need, but he is in need to other pe people's stories. As an example, Chapter 18, verse number uh, 22. You can go right now and search in Google a story. It's called The Seven Sleepers. This is a fiction story. Some Christians believe in it, but it's a false story. It's not true. It's a fiction story about seven youth who they've been discriminated or let us say prosecuted so they hide from the king in a cave and they slept there for more than 300 years the Quran copied a story which is a fiction story and put it in the Quran claiming that Allah said that story but this is a story we know the writer we know the author we know it's written we know what language is written in and this is nothing but a fiction story and Muhammad he is in need which means Allah he is in need of a fabricated story to make a story of it but look here how funny Allah is don't ask me about different uh, things now guys until I finish my topic some they will say I mean look at this logic guys I mean the Quran is the most funny book ever you see when you do not know the answer what do you do what do you say uh, some some uh, some they say and some they say but you never say the answer Look, some they will say they are three and their dog is fourth. What? What, what? Some they say they are three and their dog is the fourth. And some they say they are five and their dog is six. Hold on. Don't you notice you jump something? What about some they say they are four? Oh, oh, because he said they are uh, uh, their dog uh, uh, number four. That's funny. You see, he, he missed a number here, right? The second number he said, say, some they say they are four and their dog is number five. But Muhammad, he made a mistake. And some they say that they are seven and their dog is eight. Oh, what the heck of this? Say, oh Muhammad, my Lord is best aware of their number. <laughs> so all this drama to say nobody knows save Allah. <laughs> what about you tell us the number? Some they say they are two and their dog is number three. Some they say they are three and their dog is number four. Some they say they are four and their dog is number five. And some they say they are six and their dog is number seven. And some they say, let us continue until tomorrow. And then after that we say, Allah knows best brother. Muhammad is not sure really how, what is the number exactly. And he had to come with such a stupid statement to say, because they ask him how many they are. 
how many they are Muhammad so what is the answer what is the answer and look just to make it more stupid my lord is the best of their number none knows the number save a few a second ago you just said only Allah knows the number and now you are saying that the one who knows the number only few why as long if you then you the number so what is the number I mean do you see how silly Allah is the one who knows the number my Lord is the best aware of their number but you just say there's other people who know the number too so Allah in needs of his stories and he need to know the numbers and the only way to avoid answering the numbers is to say Allah knows best about their numbers and a few people knows like Christian friends <laughs> And the same story goes in any, you know, I, I mean, the same chapter, if you want, you know, you can find tons of verses, which is funny and stupid. You know, like, what if we go and see, just to scroll down a little bit in the in the Quran, and you will see how funny this, this book is. Uh, as an example here the story of Adam and how Allah he ordered the ad the angels to prostrate to add to Adam I mean what a funny story he copied from those who they are called uh, Sabian a group of them they believe in that uh, let us see as an example read this story Musa's prophet Musa's once he was praying a guy he came to him and he said to him if there is anyone know the truth about God more than you Musa said no I'm the best Allah immediately he gave a call to Musa's he says Musa you are wrong there's a guy his name is Al Khudr which means the green. Anyone knows why his name is the green? Who remember why his name is the green? Anyone remember? Let us see how many of you is uh, is uh, studying carefully. Sparky, please. Don't ask me about a question about a question have nothing to do with my topic. If we finish this, you can ask me the question you want. I mean, let us speak as an adult. If we have a, a class about mass, let us finish the mass. I see your question. You keep repeating the same question. So why he was called Al Khadr? No, I'm not eating actually. I have uh, I have a uh, coffee. Uh, so what? Not coffee. Uh, uh, cocoa. And uh, I mix it with uh, a coconut shred. So, why, why his name is Al Khadr? His bum grows grass. No, uh, if he Al Khadr, his name is like that because he drank from the fountains of youth. The same, the one you saw in the uh, the movie. Uh, uh, the Pirate of the Caribbean, it's exactly the same story. Uh, there is a fountain of youth, and the Muslim they believe in that. And this guy, Hil Khadr, he drank from it. This is why he called they called him Mr. Green. Because because he drank from the fountain of youth, if he sit in a grass which is dry, the grass under his ass will turn into green. All right. Now uh Maybe a Muslim he might say Christian Prince is lying. Brother, he is lying. Brother, he is lying. Hmm. Let us see.
I'm trying to find you a story. Mm. Here we go. Who won the reference? This is Sahih al Bukhari. This is Sahih al Bukhari. And this is the hadith number. So Muslim cannot say, oh, this is a lie, it's a weak story, it's not true, blah, blah. You know them. Right? You know them. So Musa's a guy, he came to him and he asked him about uh, uh, about if he is the best one who knows. And Allah told him, no, there's a guy, his name is Al-Khadr. And then Allah, he said to him, if you want to learn, uh, go and follow him. Allah said to him, oh, Musa's, you have something of Allah knowledge, which Allah has taught you and which I do not know. And I have something of Allah knowledge, which Allah had taught me, which you do not know. Moses said, but if I follow you, Al-Khadr said, then you, if you follow me, then ask, ask no questions. So this is after Allah, he told him to go and follow the, the guy and found Al-Khadr. But how he found Al-Khadr, this is the story. You will see here, I'm just trying to make the story shorter. Ibn Abbas said, Allah enemy tells a lie. Ibn Ibn Ka'ab narrated that Allah messenger said to Musa, etc. Okay, okay. And then he says, <clears throat> uh, Who is the most learned person among the people? Musa replied, I am the most learned. Allah then admonished Musa and uh, uh, he said to him don't say that you are the most knowledgeable person about me there's a guy who learned more than you yes one of our slaves at the junctions of the two seas is more learned than you Allah saying that Musa said oh my Allah how I can meet him Allah said take a fish after Musa asked him how I can meet this, this person who is very learned Allah said to him take a fifth with you in a basket and whenever the fifth lost follow it and it will find him in that place what, what? how we can find Al Khadr is not a, like a, there's no map there's no GPS no no Allah is more is, is more high tech take a fish with you Take what? Take a fish. And by the way, it's not a fish. It's a whale. But anyway, and suppose it's a, it's a dead one. So take a fish with you. It's a dead fish. So how the, how you can lose the fish? Later you will see. So take a fish with you, brother, in the basket. And whenever the fish is lost, follow it. How you can follow the fish is dead. Which means you will follow him and the fish will lead you to his place. So Musa set out along with his attendant, Yeshua ibn Nun, even even the, the even the, the the servant, his name, Yeshua ibn Nun. Nun, <coughs> if you remember, Nun is the name of the whale. Uh, Nun is a whale, <laughs> and uh, it's a whale. The, the Aramaic language, it's a it's a whale. Nun, and they carried with them a fish till they reach a rock and rested there. Moses put his head down and slept. Sufyan, the sub-narrator, said, somebody other than Omar said, that at the rock there was a water spring called Al-Hayat. What Al-Hayat mean? The life. There's a spring, it's called the spring of life. It's a water spring, the water of life. And none come and touch it, and touch with that water, but become alive now by the way this is a true story because i me myself i use i i did i died many times uh, this is a true story by the way a brother and sister, i know a very authentic story about a person he died many times his name is the christian prince and each time he died they put the water of life on the top of him and he come back to life and may allah curse him And they are telling me where the fountain of the Caribbean is coming from. So some of the water that spring fell over the fish. Look at Allah. Look at Allah trick. 
I mean, Allah, he can do everything. Allah is not in need. Allah, he cannot make the fish come to life, except he, he have to use a magical water. It's called the fountain of youth. How you say to me, Allah is rich? Who is the one who made this fountain of youth? Is that a witch? Hori Buter? Mm. I turn my head up and down. I turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it around. Then a lot I can see. A fountain of life around me. I touched the water. I became a green. And right now my name is Mr. Green. If you don't believe me. <laughs> I mean, that's amazing, my friend. That's so beautiful. So some of the water fell over the fish. And you can imagine the second the water fell over the fish, the fish start like, <laughs> you know, she's coming back to life. She opened her eyes and she looked around her. And bingo, she is alive again. And the fish, she said, I cannot believe it. I cannot believe it. I want to say the shahada, ashadu alla ilaha illallah wa in the water of life is the one who bring me to life. Here we noticed that Allah, not only he is a fairy tale stories teller, but he cannot even resurrect people to life unless he use a fiction water. If you touch it, just by touching it, I mean, you do not need God. You do not need to believe in God. If you, even if you are an atheist like Job Steve, some they say is a Christian, some they say let us say who is an atheist. If he, he die, so we put some water of the fountain of life in the top of him, and then he will become alive. Who need to go and see doctors or hospitals? Hmm. And then the fish, my friend, the fish. Uh, after the fish run from the basket entered into the sea hold on hold on so it happened look like it happened that the spring of water is in the balcony of the sea let me draw it for you again i know you like my drawing don't you i mean come on we have to be honest here don't you like my drawing i have no choice but to draw it so now we have thank you guys for those who they are making donation we appreciate your support so now we have here here is the ocean let us make the ocean blue oh mommy oh mommy mommy blue Islam is so blue oh mommy so this is the beach and this is the ocean the ocean here brother this is the ocean now the fish obviously it was laying down it was an orange fish by the way the fish was here in the basket and then here there is the fountain of youth we will make it a green because as you see if it touch you make you a life and even the grass became a green so this is the fountain of youth and the fountain of youth is making like water 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 it's like a sprinkler like the one who uh, water your grass and one of the drop of the water fall in the fish and bingo the fish start moving her tail is jumping her eyes is opening and bingo she start creeping into the sea and she jump into the sea and thanks to Allah for sure this is a very true story and if you don't believe me I swear by Allah it's true story here we go what do you want more than this you know in the Marys they say ask a thief to swear he did not steal he will be the they will be happiest to do so <laughs> if that will release him <laughs> I swear so brother the story here is very very true story and we have to believe in it then 
uh, uh, sorry, uh, Yeshua bin Nun, the servant, and uh, and the uh, and the Musas, they woke up in the morning and they keep going. And then when they want to sit to eat, he asked him to bring the fish. But Musas, I thought he should not eat the fish. The fish should lose. Why you are you eating the fish, you idiot? They did not find the fish. All right. So they came back retracting their steps and then they found in the sea the way of the fish oof, 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 looking like a tunnel brothers and sisters this is a very true story to make it simple for you for those who they are not smart because as you know we are the arab we are the smartest in the world you know, uh, this is why Shakespeare, his real name is Shakespeare. I mean, we have to be realistic here. Hmm? So, when the fish jump, uh, forgive me, I have to draw again. I, don't, I, I cannot, I cannot, uh, I cannot stop my hobby. So, the fish jump in the sea. This is the sea. Okay. See, 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 see. Okay, this is the sea. And should I drink the whole sea for you? I mean, come on. Okay, come next week until I finish uh, making the whole thing blue. I mean, so this is the sea. And now, according to the story, when the fish she jumped in the sea, she made a line, a highway like a tunnel and she was moving swimming moving swimming moving swimming moving and bingo she stopped here why here because guess what prophet al khadr was sitting in the top of the rock in the middle of nowhere in the sea this is al khadr let us make him green mr green is here so brother Moses, brother Moses, when he came, brother, all what he need to do, he need to follow the, the, the track of the fish, which is in the water, but it's not a water no more, became a rock. Which is, by the way, true story. It happened to me too. I mean, I know that many of you don't believe it because you are not smart, but this is the true story. I feel sorry for you. Look at this guy, he's laughing. I mean, shame on you. This is a true story. I swear by Allah, this is a true story. What do you want more? Here we go. We prove it to you. It's a true story. All what we need to do is swear by Allah. Now, the uh, uh, Musa's brother, let us make Musa's look uh, with this color. When he came here in the land, he was uh, tracking their footsteps and they stop here, stop here. Oh, here is the fountain of youth. Here, here, here. And then next to it, they found that there is a road inside the ocean. Inside the ocean, which means in the top of the water, there's a road. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And then they keep walking, 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 walking. Take a sleep, take a nap, walking, walking, walking. It's a long way. It's a long way. It's like, like in something in the beach. It's really far away in the ocean. They keep walking, sleep, walk, walking, eating, pooping. But you know, now he's doing now he's doing poo poo. Okay, now he's uh, you know trying to fish some fish from the ocean because they are hungry. Uh, now here, uh, Musa is texting his girlfriend. Uh, here uh, they were asking themselves, uh, take light or left, take light or left. And then uh, uh, his servant he said to him, Musa, what left or right, brother? There's only one road. Hello, Musa said, you are right. I don't know what to do without you. So he keep going because there is no right or left anyway. So he keep going, 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 and bingo, he arrived and he found where is Al Khudr. And you are telling me that Allah has no needs. Allah needs in such a stupid story to make himself Allah. Hello. Then what? What do you mean? Then what? Then Musa says to Al Khadr, "Hey Al Khadr, how are you doing, brother? <laughs> Assalamu alaikum." 
and then Al Khadr uh, Musa, he said, Allah sent me to you so I can learn from you. Al Khadr, he says, Okay, okay, but I have a condition, brother. You ask me no questions, okay? No questions. How you ever heard of a teacher? He will not, uh, he don't accept questions. So when there was an astonishing event of his attendant, again, they found the tunnel of the fish and then they reached the rock. They found a man covered with garment. Moose has agreed to him. The man said, astonishingly, is there such a greeting in your land? What? <laughs> Man. The greeting was astonishing for this Al Khadr because Moose, he said to him, Shalom to you. Al Khadr said to him, Oh my Allah, in your land, people they say Shalom. So here, the guy Al Khadr, he was like, Wow, no way. And I mean, put yourself in the shoe of Mr. Green. By the way, when I was in the like an early uh, school, like uh, you know, studying supposedly English, you know, English in the Middle East is a funny way. Uh, uh, the, the teacher himself, he need he needs somebody to teach him English. But anyway, he's the teacher. So in the in the in the uh, uh, in the book, it says Mr. Brown and Mr. Green. And then like, I look at the picture. Mr. Brown is a white man, and Mr. Green is not green. <laughs> and I said to myself, why they are calling Brown and Green? But now I understand, brother. Hey, brother, now I understand. I mean, here we go, Al Khadr, Mr. Green. Moses said, I am Moses, by the way, brother. I introduced myself. I'm Moses. The man says, Moses of Bani Israel. If, 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 the name of Moses was so famous all the way to Al Khadr. He heard about him. He is in the middle of the ocean, nobody around him. But are you Moses? Oh, you, you, Moses from the children of Israel? Moses said, Yes, and added, My, may I follow you? So you teach me something of the knowledge which have you been taught? <laughs> and here at chapter 18, verse number 66. Al Khadr, humbly he said, Oh Moses, you have something Allah taught you, I do not know. And I have something Allah taught me, and I do not know. But already Allah he says that Al Khadr is more knowledgeable. But this guy is being uh, doing taqiyya now. So he said to him, Moses, but I will follow you. Al Khadr said, Then if you follow me, ask no questions about anything until I myself speak to you concerning it. Chapter 18, verse number 70. After that, both of them proceed along the seashore. I mean, the story there is stupid, and you know, uh, you can you can uh, you can read it. Uh, but here you will find something very funny. A sparrow, a sparrow came and sat at the edge of the boat and dipped his beak into the sea. Al Khadr said to Moses, My knowledge and your knowledge, all the creation knowledge, compared to Allah's knowledge, is not more than the water taken by that sparrow. And then Moses was started by the uh, Al Khadr action. Of taking an ads and sculpting the boat. Look, look at this guy. Al Khadr, he took a boat and now he took like a, 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 like a sharp knife or you know, and he started digging a hole in the boat. Moses, he could not believe it. They are do they are going in the boat with people. You know, there's people who they are like trans. And here you notice the story. I mean, how, how they found the boat. I mean, suddenly he was in a rock in the middle of the sea, and suddenly there's a boat and there's people. Ask no questions. And then he started digging in the boat. Moses, he could not believe it. What are you doing, man? You are making a hole in the boat. We will drown. Moses uh, Khadr said to him, I said to you, ask no questions. And later, Al Khadr told him why. Because there is a pirate is going to come. 
and if you see that there's a hole in the boat you will not take it oof, 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 oof. but now we will die <laughs> it will not take it that's mean it's not usable so what the point now we will die we are going to drown I mean the wisdom is beyond imagination uh, anyway I will leave the link for you in the chat so you can you can read it by yourself because the story is will become more hilarious we need to focus a little bit more in the topic so as you see Allah have no needs but yet he is copying stupid stories fiction stories from all generations exist long before Islam if you go and read the story of a person his name Jaljamish or Gilgamesh you will find that the story of Gilgamesh include the fountain of life the guy who went to look for fountain of life the 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 the, the secret of life etc so Muhammad is nothing but a thief and his God not only in need he is in need even of fictions to make himself God what about the story of Zulqarnain where the Sun set in the murky water Allah needed Zulqarnain to make himself sound like a god. What kind of god? He says that Zulqarnain is one of our mess messengers. When Zulqarnain, which is Alexander the Great, is a bisexual, or at least he is a homosexual, and he was nothing but a criminal, you know, whatever you want to call him, yes, he was victorious, but doesn't make any difference. He attacked nations, he subdued them, he subjugated them, he take them into slavery. So Allah, he needed Zulqarnain to say he is God. Why? Because Zulqarnain is sent by him. And then we found that Allah, he is in needs to go to school. Allah in the Quran, he says, Zulqarnain he follow a highway a road till when he reached the sitting place of the Sun since when the Sun have sitting place the Muslim they try to lie to you they say oh this is how the Quran he saw, thought no read carefully Allah is talking read carefully they will ask thee of the Quran say I shall recite into you remembrance of him who's talking Allah Lu, we made a strong in the land and gave him into every thing a road so Allah blessed him and he follow a road which Allah he gave him till he reached the sitting place of the Sun so Allah he's acknowledging now there's a place where the Sun set and then he says and he found it the Sun sitting in the murky water the Muslim they try to lie to you and say this is how it appeared to Zulqarnain that's easy to get them busted with because Muhammad as usual he cannot keep his mouth shut so Muhammad he said narrated by Abu Dhar he said I was sitting behind the messenger of Allah S A W F M O O O O W S Mercedes Benz who was riding a donkey while the Sun setting he asked do you know where this is set Guys, close your eyes. Please close your eyes. Imagine you are behind the Prophet of Allah. I'm so glad I am not in front of him. Behind is more safe and secure. And then the Prophet, he speaks to you and he says, Do you know where this set? And like, boing. And now because you are a fool, you do not know where this set, huh? Uh, Prophet of Allah. I replied, Allah and his apostle knows best. And for sure, this is a very perfect answer, brother. Because if you say something else, the Prophet, he will kill you immediately. He said, it's set. He hear the wisdom now. P please, please uh, be quiet. I mean, come on, show respect to the wisdom. The wisdom is coming from heaven. 
this is a heavenly wisdom it's set in a spring of warm water and you know all my life I ask myself a question do the Sun take a shower with cold water or hot water and unbelievable, unbelievable. the Prophet the brother he taught us right now that the Sun sit in the warm water which means she like to take a bath in the hot water and that is the priceless So Allah, he claimed that he taught Muhammad a knowledge. Proving his story in the Quran in chapter 18 about Zulqarnain. Yet he is believing that the sun set in the murky water as many generations long before Islam, they used to believe in such a garbage. Let us move on so we can warp this subject up. What about Allah? He cannot fight his enemies. Allah cannot kill anyone. Chapter 9, verse number 14. It says, Kill them, and Allah will punish them by your hands. If Allah is all God Almighty and He can kill, why He need to say, Kill them, Allah punish them by your hands. What happened to His hands? Allah, He need your hands to kill me as a Christian. Abdul, your God, Allah cannot kill us. He need you to kill us. For he is not Almighty God. This is Muhammad fabricating a verse saying, Allah, he said that. Well, Allah, if you don't want that, I mean, he don't want us to be exist. He just, don't you Muslim, you say, if Allah wants something to happen, he say be, and it was. So Allah, he cannot kill unless he use some fool to kill. Even we hear ISIS and Al-Qaeda repeating a verse. Chapter 18, 8, verse number 17. It is not you who slew them, it was Allah. So Allah, because he is in this ability, yet he claimed it is him who killed them. It is not you who throw the arrow, it was Allah. Allah. Is a disabled God he cannot kill it is not you who throw the arrow it's Allah who throw the arrow but all of us we knew that this is garbage it is you who go and die to fight for the sake of the stupid God and then to comfort you that you are not a criminal he says it's not you who killed them it's me so Allah he is in need for Abdul's to do jihad for him he cannot do it what else Allah he needs? I'm just trying to to uh, you know show you some of the needs of Allah. What about Allah? Uh, he need Muhammad. The Muslims always they say we worship Allah, not Muhammad. But as you see, Allah Himself He worship Muhammad. Hadith. And this is sunnah.com. Let me post the link for you for those who like to have reference. If not for you, O Muhammad, I would not have created the creation. What does that mean? Allah without Muhammad is nothing. Allah without Muhammad is bored. Allah without Muhammad have no desire to live or to create. Allah without Muhammad is not even worthy. Allah without Muhammad will not be known. How we will know Allah if he did not create us? So why Allah he created everything? 
because of Muhammad. Lawlaka, lawlaka, ma khalaqtu al-aflaq. What do the uh, respected ulama, which means the scholars of the religion and Sharia, says about this hadith? Which book, this hadith, etc.? The answer. Read carefully the answer. This is not my answer. This is the Abdul answer. Indeed. Indeed, brother. The Prophet of Allah, Allah pray on him and salute him, is the reason for the creation of Adam, alayhi salam, and the universe. If the Prophet of Allah was not to exist, then the Arsh, which means the chair of Allah, the loh, which is the, the the book of Allah, and the qalam, which means the pen of Allah, the sky, the earth, the heaven, the hell, the trees, the stones, and all other creatures would not exist. Are you telling me that even Christian prince will not be exist? How horrible! Nothing will be exist if it is not. Allah Oh boy people they text me in the middle of nowhere Don't text me in Skype if you are watching YouTube my friend let me go off out of Skype. It's annoying. So as you see, Allah, He Himself, He need a motivation. What does that mean? I mean, if not if not Muhammad, Allah created no sky, no earth, no heaven, no hell. Even His chair, Allah would be standing up all the time. Why Allah? He, okay, hold on. Anyone thought about it? Why Allah? He have a chair. Why Allah created the chair? When, when here they say. That Allah He created the chair. Kursi is a chair. Arsh. Arsh is a throne. Kursi is a chair. Why Allah He created the, the chair for Himself only because of Muhammad? Anyone knows? Anyone knows? Why Allah He created his chair just because of Muhammad? Uh, any, any Muslim have an answer? Because Muhammad, Allah, he need to write the name of Muhammad somewhere, brother. So Allah, okay, because all of you, most of you are slow, not like smart like us Arab, I have to help you with some uh, art, brother. Forgive me. I mean, what I can say. I wish all of you are Arab, I wish, but I, I am not Allah to make you Arab. We are the smartest people in the world, brother. Okay. We are trying to find you something. All right. Hey brother, this is the chair of Allah, brother. And I don't know if you like it or not. I mean, who care if you like it or not? This is how it is. You like it, like it, you don't like it. You know, make a complaint. And look, there is a flowers there. Allah, because he cannot live without the prophet muhammad his name to be exist all over he created this chair for him for allah yes but he needed to see the name of muhammad all over so he got a pen and he start writing there on the chair brother on the chair and for sure brother in arabic Muhammad. Muhammad. Hey, 
everywhere in the chair, brother. Muhammad. Muhammad. I mean, brother, you name it. Allah spent millions of years writing the name of Muhammad, brother. Muhammad. And yet the Muslims, they say to us, we don't worship Muhammad. Obviously, Allah, your God himself, you worship Muhammad. There is no Allah. It's a fabricated name. The whole point is Muhammad. Allah have no authority. He have no throne. He, the throne, the reason he have a throne, because of Muhammad. Allah, please don't sit, because if you sit now, you are sitting over Muhammad, and Muhammad will kill you. Have you ever heard of a stupid cult more than this? And the funny, the Muslim, they say to the Christians, you Christians worship a man. No, we don't worship a man. We worship God who came to us as a man. But you Muslims, you worship a man who is sexually maniac, mentally idiot, stupid in knowledge, mad in behavior, and even his sex has no proof of it. To the point the Hadith says, that the prophet he used to imagine himself having sex but in fact he never did oh boy i wouldn't like i would not like that to happen to me imagine you get married you have 13 wives and they are waiting for you in the bedroom some of them have panties and some without panties. And they are so excited because you are very handsome, brother. Like Muhammad. Prophet Muhammad was very handsome. Even his underarm was very white. The white supremacist religion. The Prophet continued for such a such a period of time, imagining that he had bang bang with his wife, but in fact he was not doing that. So what he was doing, Abdul? He was imagining what then? I mean, what happened? I mean, I understand he have no witnesses when he went to the to the to the heaven. He have no witnesses when he went to Jerusalem. He have no witnesses for anything. But even six, there's no witnesses. I never heard of such a thing. I mean, six with the wife. At least there was a wife there having a witness. Even that, it turned to be false. Any Abdul? Let us continue. Oh, uh, I just remembered, you know, like uh, sometimes I don't remember things. Uh, the reason, especially if I borrow money from you, I don't remember it. I'm, I'm like Muhammad. I'm, I remember only to say to you, give me a mortgage. After you give me the mortgage, I don't remember anything about it. Look what happened. Do you remember when Muhammad Allah wanted to send him to take him to heaven? What Allah he did to him? Who remember? Anyone remember? When Allah he wanted to send Muhammad to heaven, what he did to him? Allah, he need to make a plastic surgery for the breast and the chest of Muhammad. He sent the three angels, brother. One of them is Jibreel. And then they came to Muhammad and they lay him next beside the will of Zamzam. Zam, Zam, Zam. It sounds like Chinese sometimes. From among them, Jibreel. Took a charge of him. Jibreel cut out open the part of the body of his body between his throat and the middle of his chest. In different hadith, it says all the way to his testicles. And he, brother, took all the material in his chest. 
the abode men and he washed it with zamzam water hold on hold on Allah want to take Muhammad to heaven Allah do not need anything why Allah need to make a surgery for his prophet in order to take him to heaven and now he is using water to wash the material what is the material there are you serious Allah he used water to wash the material in the chest of the Prophet are you sure to help you to understand the story because of most of you are not smart like us Arab I have to use some drawing Jibril brother he come and he have a very big knife with him like Isis and then brother Jibril brother he put Muhammad next to the water of Zamzam and he cut wide open his chest and he start taking the material from his belly and then he put it in Zamzam water and then after he wash it he put it back and then brother surprise surprise Allah do not need anything brother Allah he can do anything by saying be but he needed to install wisdom in the chest of the Prophet have you ever heard of a God he installed wisdoms in dishes if you don't believe me read the story it says after he washed it with his own hands with the water of Zamzam uh, he cleansed the inside of his body like the body of Muhammad looked like was very 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 awful you know garbage you know uh, plastic you know Allah knows what the Prophet was swallowing at that time and then a golden tray containing gold bowl full of belief and wisdom was brought and Jibreel stuffed it in his chest and his throat blood vessels okay hold on Allah do not need anything why Allah he needed to do a surgery for his prophet to take him to heaven and since when wisdom and faith they come in dishes So my friend when the Muslim they say that Allah is rich Allah have no needs we find the stories of the Quran and the hadith confirming that Allah is really a, a fiction stupid God cannot be exist and you have to be a truly a stupid naive to believe in such a story how they say to Allah say to us that Allah if you want something he say be is going to be yet he cannot say to Muhammad okay have a clean chest and what the clean chest mean I mean what does that mean Muhammad was filthy dirty what does that mean inside him there's a sewage what exactly they wash inside I mean well, this is stupid and then what they install a dish of wisdom and faith in his in his chest who is the city when I believe in such a garbage do you know mr. Sayyid Ahmed Hassan my friend his name is like a train I know Muhammad only the rest they don't count for me who need any of those if we have Muhammad so as you see Allah in needs to fiction stories Allah in needs to fountain of youth Allah in need to wash dishes Allah in need to install uh, wisdom Allah in need of people to worship him why Allah he created mankind after all those fiction stupid stories Muhammad he said in the Quran what does that mean I created not mankind except to worship me so Allah he need to work to be worshipped 
That's the only reason. Allah, He needed, He's lonely. He created people just for a purpose to satisfy His needs. I created the jinn and mankind only that they might worship me. If you go in the hadith, that will be explained better by this hadith. The Messenger of Allah said, By the one who is hand in my soul, which means he swear by Allah, were you not to commit sin, Allah would replace you with people who would commit sin and then seek forgiveness from Allah and would forgive them. So if you don't commit sin, Allah will destroy you. Why Allah He don't like you not to commit sin? What's wrong with Allah if you are a good person? Because the purpose of you is to worship Him and, and, and beg for His forgiveness. Please, Allah, forgive me. So this is in total consistent with the verse in the Quran where it says Allah He created mankind and genie, chapter 51, verse number 56, only to worship me. It's just for His benefit, not for your benefit. What is the benefit? Allah, He needs a benefit from you to be worshipped, to beg for forgiveness. And this is why if you don't beg for forgiveness, because you did not commit sin, if you do not commit sin, you don't beg for forgiveness. And then Allah, what He would do for you, you, you there's no need for you. So begging for forgiveness is the way Allah, He wants you to be. He have a need. He, he likes to hear people saying, please, 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 we need you. That is a mental illness. He's not creating you because he likes you, not because he's good to you, not because he's a nice God, but because he needed your worship and begging. <clears throat> right? So as you see, Islam failed a little tiny examination. We are here just for a few, you know, I mean, what, an hour, two hours? Islam could not stand little tiny examination. Allah not only in need, Allah need money, Allah need an army, Allah need fighters, Allah cannot punish us by himself, he punish you by the hand of the Abdul. Allah, he need people who commit sin. And by the way, this is a totally in contradiction with the logic the Muslims, they say they believe in the story of Noah. What the story of Noah is, story of Noah, people, they commit sin. So why he didn't destroy them then? Oh, they did not ask for forgiveness. Allah have no problem if you commit sin. Because he created you, he wanted you to commit sin. This is why we see the story about Adam. If you remember, Muhammad, he claimed that Adam, he commit sin because it was the plan of Allah. Do you see it? 40 years before Adam was created, Allah, he wrote his destiny. So even the sin of Adam was a plan of Allah because he want him and his offspring to commit sin so they will beg him for forgiveness. Do you blame me for a sin which Allah, I should do, I should do. It's decreed by Allah, I should do. It's not a choice, I should do. Do you see it? Funny, stupid story. <clears throat> so, my friend, I want to say thank you for all those who join us today. Thank you for those who uh, 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 support us with donation. Uh, thank you for those who download the video, share it around, and for those who speak Spanish. Soon, very soon, and maybe in seventy-two hours from now my first trans translated book into Spanish will be out on Amazon. So if you are a person who speaks Spanish, please tell your friends about the book. And this is the cover as you see in the screen. And those who speak French, please help us to tell the people about the French book because most of the people who listen to me are English speaking people. So very few they knew about the French book. If you speak French, please tell your friends. And for sure, we have our books in German, which has became very well known in Germany. And we have in Swedish, 
we have in Dutch and uh, God is war is, is, is willing we will have in all languages of the world so uh, what we share with you here is little of a lot and if you like to learn more we have the books to give you a reference to be handies now remember uh, the best way to learn is to have a good teacher but a good teacher cannot make you educated unless you are listening and you want really to learn and no matter how hard he work and no matter how much he try if you are not willing really to learn you learn nothing uh, somebody said uh, explain just because he requested what chapter chapter 3 verse number 55 I think he said what chapter guys he was asking 33 uh, sorry a 3 and he said 55 Just to answer this uh, gentleman, is قال الله يا عيسى إني متوفيك ورافعك إلي ومطهرك عن الذين من الذين كفروا وجعل الذين تبعوك فوق الذين كفروا إلى يوم القيامة ثم إلي مرجعكم. Here, here the verse proving to us again the stupidity of the one who made the Quran, because you will notice two things. First of all, the translation is false because it says, "O oh Jesus, not I am gathering you; I am causing your death. You will die." And then I will take you to heaven. The Muslim translation, they lie. They say, I'm gathering you. Why? What, what do you mean gathering you? He's a, he was a part. He was pieces. What gathering you? Fast translation. And then it says, And I am a cleaning thee of those who disbelieve. And I am setting those who follow thee above those who disbelieve until the day of resurrection. And here, that is a big contradiction for the Quran. Because that means those who follow Jesus they never been corrupted and this is a promise made to Jesus in the time of Jesus so how those who follow Jesus they will be victorious until the day of resurrection yet the Muslim they say Paul Paul is the one who corrupt the Bible which means from the beginning the Bible is corrupted where so where is the true followers of Jesus where is the true followers of Jesus who will be exist till the day of resurrection if you say to me the Muslim that would be funny because Muhammad came 600 years after Jesus right a Muslim saying I'm a big big liar okay you can say that as, as you wish but you cannot prove me to be a liar it's your prophet who lie when he said there's a flying carpet who is a liar it's your prophet who promised you in this penis big ass one mile it's your prophet who promised you 70 years orgasm all of this is not a lie for you and me reading your verse in the Quran make me a liar that's funny you don't dare to call me he's a potato oh there's no screen sorry guys there's no screen forgive me there's no screen all right yeah as you see here in the screen let's read it again it says and remember uh, uh, when Allah said oh Jesus I am gathering thee it doesn't say that in Arabic it says inni mutawafika mutawafika which means causing your death and then I will take you up to me this is a fast translation and then here it says and the cleansing thee from those who disbelieve and I am setting those who follow thee above those who disbelieve until the day of resurrection that's mean the true Christians will be always victorious and there's no false Christianity will be exist and that is a contradiction for all what the Muslim they say to us proving from their book that we are the victorious since the time of Jesus until the day of resurrection so where is the Christians who follow Jesus if you say those are the Muslim that's going to be true because this is about Allah promising Jesus in the time of Jesus 
the Muslims are not following Jesus they don't have a book it's called the book of Jesus to follow Jesus they are following a guy his name is Muhammad believing in Jesus does not make you follow Jesus secondly is speaking about from the time of Jesus until the day of resurrection which means including the period of 600 years before Muhammad show up so why they lie and they say Paul corrupted the Christianity right Uh, someone saying we must forgive we must love yes my friend we forgive and we love but we don't love hate and we don't love the devil and we don't love Antichrist and we don't love those who you know let us say there are certain names we cannot love them can you can you love Muhammad who deceived millions of people billions of people can you love the devil can you forget the devil? So let us not to take a Christianity quotation out of uh, out of its meaning. Loving your enemy does not mean having sex with the enemy. It's mean you tell him the truth. Right? If you love your children, it's not by giving them hugs. It's by guiding them to what is right to be done. Your son is taking drugs and you say, I love you, do whatever you wish. That's not love, that's hate. If you love someone, you save him. You don't lie to him. Say pray. What? Hold on. But Allah says, S A W T, pray Jesus according to Shem Shamu. I don't know what they mean. My friend from Indonesia, I do not know what they mean. Uh, another question before we go. A person, he asked me that the Muslims in Indonesia, they ask him about the Song of Songs or the Song of Solomon. My friend, it's a song. And it's written by a king, not by God. It's a poet written by a king. This is number one. Number two is not about women. It's about a city. Number three. Muslims, they used to make fun of the Song of Songs for years and years. And then suddenly there is a guy, his name is Didat. He found that the name of Muhammad in the Song of Songs. And suddenly the Song of Songs became holy. So the Song of Songs was for the Muslims a book of porn. But after one of them claimed that he found the name of Muhammad in the Song of Song, suddenly the Song of Song became Holy Song. Because they are hypocrite and liars. All right? Now you do not need to answer this guy who called himself liar. The whole point of him is making you say the name he like you to say. Muslims, they have no ability to answer. Everything the Muslims they claim is proven to be false from their book, not from any book else. I do not need any book. A Muslim he says to me, "Oh Jerusalem, oh the, the uh, Israel is the land of uh, of the Arab." since when even your God Allah never mentioned that even your God Allah he says this is the land of the Jews in chapter 5 verse number 21 so even the most famous problem in earth known to be proven from the Quran that it's not true this is the land of the Jews even the book of Allah the book of the Kuffar the book of the pagans who kiss black stones Prove that Jerusalem and Israel is the land of the Jews. And anyone he says something else, he is a Muslim, he is a hypocrite. This is your book. Allah told Musa to say, Go and enter the holy land which Allah assigned into thee. So why you lie?
You name it. We asked him that already. You're a moon god. Uh, are you accepting my challenge? What is your challenge, Ben? Why you don't call me? You want to call me, Ben? Do you like to call me? I like to accept the change when they are hot. Do you like to call me? Or you are a person who make a challenge in the mirror? Hmm? Are you really challenging me? Do you accept my change? What's your challenge? Do you want to call me? If you if you if you can call me, I will stay just for you. What do you say, guys? Do you think this guy is a is serious or he's just a kid? We always accept Muslim change. Doesn't matter who they are, how old they are, how, how small they are. I need a snack for today before I go. So do you do you dare? Do you dare to give me a snack before I go? My Skype is open. All of us we need a snack. You are our snack for today. Call me. Be a man. Be soft. Yeah, actually, I'm using. Uh, I'm going to use Vaseline when I debate him. What happened to you? What is your text? A second ago, you were challenging me. Now you are not. I don't see you moving. What happened to your tail? Ah, uh, maybe he said that he 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 was saying to himself, "I hope Christian Prince will not notice." So I will go to my girlfriend and see. See, see what happened. I told the Christian Prince, "I challenge you." <laughs> go to your four wives and I will not mention anything whatever happened in Vegas will stay in Vegas okay brother go to your four wives and tell them I challenge the Christian Prince and the coward you run away from me who, who are you don't you see your big scholars they are running away like cats I don't even dare to challenge myself I will lose once I debated myself in the mirror I lost I was so upset I broke the mirror so what happened even your text is not working what happened to this guy he's dead now he's playing dead somebody uh, sprinkled the water from the fountain of youth over over him anyway guys I want to say thank you for being here may the Lord bless you and enter we see you soon again if I can go again on air today I will go if not I hope by tomorrow God is willing and until we see you again Christ is Lord Islam is false and thank you very much for being here take care bye bye